Hello, Gargayi. This is Matt Ridzen at Simitech Group. So I spoke with some colleagues and I also built a small test model here that resembles what you had on our phone call this morning. Anyways, I'm going to use this short video to talk through a couple different scenarios and hopefully um, shine some light on what's going on. So we got three different simulations here on the workbench page. We have system A with an applied moment. We have system B with an applied displacement and system C with an applied remote displacement. So if we bring up the model here, this is our geometry. It's cyclic symmetry. It's just a 45 degree sector. Similar to what you had, um, I have two bodies here formed into a multi-body part. I think you had them uh, coming together in a uh, shrink fit type of operation in load step one, but that was uh, an irrelevant detail that uh, didn't relate to the question. Anyways, uh, we come down here. I have a remote point scoped to the upper and lower faces of the outer body and you can see the remote point is situated here at global cartesian so if we click on global coordinate system we can see it right there and um, i also created a cylindrical coordinate system just as you did and z is pointing out the screen at us x is radial and y is theta so we come down here we just have an ordinary mesh on there nothing special um, let's come down here. I put a frictionless support on all of these simulations on both sides of the uh, to simulate the symmetry conditions. And we have a cylindrical support here on this inside face with radial, axial, and tangential fixed. Okay. And in this first simulation, we have an applied moment. I arbitrarily applied 100 pound inches, as we see right here. And it's scoped to uh, that remote point, which is applying to those two faces on the outer body. Anyways, uh, we come down here and take a look at the moment reaction. We're getting roughly minus 7 pound inches on that cylindrical support. Okay. And for that, um, I'll just take a look here. Max principal stress. We're getting roughly uh, 60 PSI as our max principal stress. And so what you were doing was trying to run this scenario, but also run another scenario, which I'm going to talk about shortly, with an applied displacement. And then you were finding the point in time where the moment reaction was close to what you got in the first scenario, and then looking at the max principal stress at that time to see if it compared with your first scenario. And it did not. Okay, and that's what I'm going to talk through now. Before we leave this first simulation, I want to go ahead and insert coordinate systems, nodal triads, and solve that. And let's take a look. This is a little detail that's going to come up in the next simulation that's kind of important. So if we zoom in here, we can see little triads on every single node of the model. And you can see them oriented and aligned with global Cartesian. Okay. So just bear that in mind as we take a look at this next model. So here's the second simulation. We have the frictionless support again on both sides as before. Cylindrical support on this interface. And we have an applied displacement of an arbitrary number, 1 e to the minus 4. And it's oriented along this cylindrical coordinate system that we created. So it's acting in the theta direction. Okay. So in theory, it should just spin this in the theta direction with an applied displacement. And then you can come down here and look at the moment reaction. Uh, by the way, this moment reaction is about 123 pound inches. So you were finding the point in time where it was roughly 7, which is what we had the previous in the previous simulation. And then you were scoping out the max principal stress at that point in time. And you found uh, big differences. So um, let's just go ahead and bring up a calculator here. So uh, 7 divided by 123, 0.0569. Okay, so let's multiply that by our max principal stress, 58,880. Okay, so multiply that by 58880. And so our max principal 
is on the order of 3,350 PSI, which is very different um, from what we saw earlier. Okay, so all I did was a linear interpolation of the moment reaction here uh, at the point in time when seven pound force inches occurs in this time history and then applied that ratio upon this principal stress and we see it did not come out properly. So let's right click and insert coordinate system nodal triads and hit solve here. Let's snap into the Z orientation. We zoom in here. So the displacement applied to the cylindrical coordinate system rotates the nodal coordinate systems into the local coordinate system. In this case, a cylindrical system. So the problem is, let's pick on a node down here on the bottom. Um, so we have a node here and theta is pointing 45 degrees up and to the left. The problem here is that these nodal coordinate systems upon which the displacement is applied never rotate or update through the solution. So as you continue to apply 1e to the minus 4, I think it was, yeah, 1e to the minus 4, on this node here throughout the solution, it will always yank on that node 45 degrees up and to the left in an unnatural way. So even if the node is kind of rotating uh, less than 45 degrees, maybe 40 or 35, there's going to be a displacement yanking it 45 degrees up and to the left through the whole timeline of the solution. And that goes for every single one of these nodes that has that applied displacement. The nodal coordinate systems will not update through the solution. So that distorts the results. We get this moment reaction. Okay, let's go ahead and magnify this really big. This is what we get. So if we animate it, every single one of those nodes is being yanked 1e to the minus 4 in its nodal coordinate system at the beginning of the solution. So even though it's 1e to the minus 4 and it's very small, it's still enough to throw off the results, okay, because those coordinate systems do not update, okay. By the way, we can see here the frictionless support is being upheld. Okay, we have this. This is a distorted graphics image. Okay, I magnified at 5x. But we can see the one face here and then the other face here where we had the frictionless support. They hold steady in space. Okay. So, uh, scenario two does not work. Let's go down to scenario three here. We have our frictionless support again. We have our cylindrical support on this face here. And this time we used a remote displacement. And down here, I arbitrarily specified some angle, 1e to the minus 2. Okay. And it's scoped to that remote point that I created earlier, which is applying on those two faces. So we come down here and look at the moment reaction. And we're seeing roughly minus 942 pound inches at the end of the solution. So recall at the beginning that the first scenario had roughly 7 pound inches of reaction. So let's put in our calculator. We're going to do linear interpolation. 7 divided by 942. And we get 0 .0074 and some change. Okay. So let's apply that ratio to our max principal stress. We're seeing 81.55, okay, so this is the point in time where our moment reaction equaled what we saw at the uh, first simulation. So let's apply this ratio times 81.55, hit enter, and we get 60.6 PSI. So at the point in time where our moment reaction matched the first simulation, the max principal stress also matches the first simulation. So we have 60.6 here, and we had, let's see, right here, 60.0. So those are sufficiently close to each other to uh, close the deal and say it's good. So the first and the third scenarios work, but the second one does not, and that's because of these nodal triads not updating through the solution. Okay. Now, you also sent another email asking about applied forces. 
it's sort of a similar situation where you have a force being applied along a coordinate system that does not update to the solution, okay? But in this case, the forces are applied. You know, so if you came in here and inserted a force, it's going to wipe out the solution here. Let's suppress this guy. And we'll specify, let's see, this face and this face. And we will specify components, cylindrical coordinate system, and we'll specify this as direct. So we'll arbitrarily put something on there as 50, and we could work through that and solve it. But we're going to encounter the same problem. Um, in this case, let's bring up the help menu here. The SFE command is used in the background. I don't know if you know the APDL language, but that's running in the background to build out this model and solve it. Okay, it's the backbone. The SFE command is used. This is a surface load on elements. Okay, and so it's, a, it's applying a pressure. I know we specified a force in mechanical, but it converts it into a pressure behind the scenes and applies it. And it uses this SF control command to rotate the elemental coordinate systems. Okay, we're not talking about nodal coordinate systems this time. These load, this force load is applied to the elements with the SFE command. The SF control command is used in the background to align the elemental coordinate systems into the local cylindrical coordinate system, okay? But they, again, do not update through the solution, okay? Unless, the one caveat here is that you can insert additional APDL commands and I'm not going to get into here. It's kind of like um, a little bit deeper than you're probably looking for. But there is some additional commands we could insert to the uh, model and mechanical to make those elemental coordinate systems update through the solution. But just a native application, okay, with no extra commands applying this force, it will not update those coordinate systems and you will encounter a similar situation where the results are warped and skewed and incorrect, okay? All right, so go ahead and think through those things. See if you can reproduce it on your end. I suggest either this first or this third scenario, okay? And not that second scenario. So you want to be taking a look here at the supplied moment or in the third scenario at the applied remote displacement. All right, so take a look at that, see if you can reproduce some better results on your end. And as always, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. All right, thanks for watching.